in about two months, I'm gonna have an ACL reconstruction. I'm gonna be physically disabled for a little while. For a little while. Salts. Um, but this is not my first one. This is my fourth one. <laughs> so like I I came so for some backstory. I came home from Afghanistan in 2012. Three days after I came home, I tore my ACL and had to get a an ACL reconstruction. But you're still, you're still on orders because I was still on orders. Uh, I was a National Guard. I got sent back to Fort Knox hmm. um, and had to get my ACL surgery there alone after a very difficult deployment. Um, and it was probably one of the hardest times in my life, mentally, emotionally, even physically for me. Um, and so I, I very much intimately know what it feels like to not be able to pursue the things I physically want to pursue. Um, and it is a very difficult place to be, but it is not a place you have to live within yourself and destroy and degrade who you are right it is it you know from the military you're going to get disability if you apply yourself and you know go to a vet center go to the va um you know put in the diligent work to make sure you're taking care of yourself uh and and that is a that's that's a beneficial thing for you to do is like just because you physically can't do things doesn't mean you mentally can't do things right during that time uh, you know, I was still in the military, still am in the military during those times where I was physically unable, I was still able to lead. I was still able to challenge my soldiers to do better, um, mentally, emotionally, uh, and, and even help them understand how to physically do better, even though I couldn't do it myself. Um, you, you very much need to transition out of the physical ability mindset and step into using your fucking brain because that is that is by far the best and most important muscle you have in your body if you're not training it if you're not supporting it if you're not taking care of it this is your opportunity to do to, to do so um you know for me I've, I've i've written a book i've you know i've done all sorts of things using my brain where i didn't have to use my legs even though you know i value them and i i love them and i'm about to lose access to one of them for about nine months mm. uh you know and so i have to then take that step back and say how can i transition my physical purpose into my mental purpose and develop something that's beneficial for me you know you you have to right you can't sit within yourself and say i'm useless because i physically can't do anything now mm -hmm. well that's not the fucking truth because if if you have a physical disability that stops you from walking okay Use your fucking fingers, type on the computer, type on your phone, make videos on your phone if that's the purpose that you want to have. Talk about things. If you can move your mouth, you can impact a lot of people. And so, I mean, stop with the excuses about I physically can't do certain things. Certainly, that's hard to face, but it doesn't limit you in the many other profound things that you can actually support people with, help people with, uh, guide people through talk to people about, you have an infinite number of possibilities within yourself to actually use the tool that you have. Even if you are mentally and, and let's say brain, your brain is disabled, you still have a story to tell. So fucking tell it, right? I don't care if it's hard for you to speak. The ability to overcome and conquer that ability is something that's beneficial for people. There are other veterans out there like you who are also struggling with PTSD or TBI who can't speak. And so if you're the one that does speak, you're speaking directly to people that need you mm -hmm. and, and need your support. So fucking do that. Develop a mental purpose that out, outweighs your physical incapabilities and actually utilize that for something that is purposeful and beneficial. You're only as disabled as you feel. Exactly. So you're I, a sniper. I, I can't. I I'm a can't not do that. I'm a career counselor. <laughs> so my job in the army, the physical here, this is this is crazy. So the physical assessment. So uh, the military, the army said a couple years ago that there has to be a physical test for every job, mm -hmm. not not a PT test, but a physical test. So our physical test for a career counselor is down in the basement of the uh, the trade act building in uh, Fort McCoy or Fort. Right, 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 Fort, Fort Knox, we have to put a put on a 35 pound rucksack. We have to walk, it's like 40 feet, uh, turn, not in a bone face, do a, a turn and then walk 40 feet back and then lift the backpack off our, our back. 
because that was the physical assessment you have to take in order to pass uh, 79 Victor's course, which is Army Reserve Crew Counselor course. Um, do you so know? I am capable of walking. I didn't have to do a flight of stairs. I am just, I am capable. Now I have a flight of stairs in my office because, you know, I'm high speed. So I got to walk about 100 yards with a backpack with a laptop on it. <laughs> and I pass this in a simulation. Do you know that <laughs> just in my job, we have one rifle that is 35 pounds? I don't doubt it. It sounds hideous. <laughs> and then we have to carry everything else. If, <laughs> if I got to carry two laptops in my office right now, it's a bad day. <laughs> And we get oh paid, and we get paid the same, right? <laughs> Hypocrisy, it's bullshit. Yeah. But hey, you know what? I got a white collar job <laughs> in the army. Hey, I'm hey. about to make E8. Yep. Yeah. Hey, I play my cards. Uh, I and I, I can, I can pass an ACFT like a mofo. I mean, Old PT test, new PT test. I can still get it done. Yeah, you just got to do it. Here, you want to hear something? I, I haven't fired a weapon in seven years. Been in the army eighteen years. I have not fired a weapon. Can't do in that. seven years for the army, I just can't do that. I, We're gonna fire the next week. Yeah, where are you guys going? McCoy, McCoy. Yeah, but you guys, you guys go to the cyber ranges, or are you guys going? No, the, not this time. We're doing uh, individual weapons. Just I'm, I'm for a qual. Yeah, you guys still have sixteens or just fours? Fours. Yeah, I should go up with you guys. I could, I could fire. I would be like that guy. So everybody that's in the military knows that there's these guys. So the, your units are how many people are in the unit? Our recon section's got like 25. Oh, it's, it's okay. So it's not big. So when I used to be an MP and uh, I would run ranges, so I'd run 249 range or, you know, mm -hmm. M4, M16 range, no big deal. But when I, whenever I ran the M9 range, it would drive me nuts because we would run the M9 range. It's a nine millimeter Beretta um, yeah. in the Army. And we'd be running the range. We had about 140 soldiers in our units. So we got to push them through. Then all of a sudden, a bunch of JAG officers would show up yep. or medical officers, like, Oh, hey, we're, uh, hey, you're running range today, right? And so there's like, I think 12 lanes, 12, 15 lanes. So you can get your fires for, even with bolos mm -hmm. in like 15 iterations, yep. right? You're normally done by like 1,300, 1,400, yep. shut the range down, right? But these guys would come on, like, hey, heard you're running the range today. And now so random people would show up to the range. You can't say no to them because you are technically running a range. Yep. They typically, they'll take, they'll, 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 have their own allocation of ammunition, even though you have to basically process it for them. Yep. Um, because you have to bring it on your range, whatever. And th and then they're a bunch of non-firing individuals. Yep. And I say that in the nicest way possible. Yep. And so now your range that should have been, you know, nice and simple. Some some, I say jag officers, not like a jag off, but a jag officer <laughs> or medical personnel, right? Or like the chaplain's assistant, now now re re religious affairs officer, yep. comes out and fires. And then you have to coach them through it because you want them to pass, but you also want to leave. Yep. So I could be that guy. I could show up to your range and be like, also, they also show up with other own weapons. I don't have to I don't have to run anything this yeah. month. I don't think so. Gotcha. I probably will. End so up so as a platoon sergeant, that was that, and that's one of the reasons I got in the reserve, the, the, the career counseling job. Because as a platoon sergeant, you got you to run your platoon. Yeah, but you also had to run ranges and do these other things on the weekend, on drill weekends. I remember working like 18, 20 hour days on a drill weekend was nothing. Yeah. You'd go hard till, you know, 2300, you know, midnight. And then you'd be back up at 4, 430 because you're prepping trucks, you know, and this whole idea of, oh, just delegate down now. You're, you nope. You're watching every single thing happen, making sure everybody's up. Yeah. It's it, the, the, the Army Reserve drill weekend at, in this case, Fort McCoy, or I'll argue anytime you have to go to the, it is, it is, you want to see micromanagement. Mm -hmm. It is micromanagement 101. Yep. Where, where NCOs and officers have these part time jobs, but full time obligations on that weekend. I don't run ranges every weekend, but, but two, two weekends a year, I would be running a range. And they also are our company in their wisdom. And that, well, I wasn't mad, but like they would change. So like, you know, in April, for example, first platoon would do the M9 range, second platoon would do the 249 range, third platoon would do the, the M4, M16 range. And then the next October, they would rotate it, right? Because they wanted all the platoons to be able to run all the ranges. Yeah. The problem with that is, if you don't run a range for like, so it's 18 month yeah. cycle, <laughs> it's 24 months since you did it last, it's changed. And it's a different range every time. <laughs> and it's a different, so basically every six months, and you have to take 90 days to prepare for the range. So you spend six months Right, 90 days before both these ranges, preparing for to do yeah. something that you're going to be really good at by about 1,400, 1,500 that day. 
and you you won't do it again for two years. Yep. And it looks good on paper. Looks great. And, and you feel so great about it after the fact. And the fact that I've never had an incident, yeah. and half the time I was guessing. I'm reading because you're reading off the manual, you're, you're calling in a range control, you're doing all the things you're supposed to do. Yep. But in the back of your head, you're like, I have no idea what I'm doing. Yeah. Like, they, they trusted me with tens of thousands of rounds, mm -hmm. 200 weapons, and 200 soldiers, and I have no idea what I'm doing. <laughs> and I have a phone with some civilian sitting somewhere. That'll treat me like shit yep. if I ask him one question because I'm unsure. <laughs> like, God damn it, how do you not know this? Well, sir, uh, I, I pour concrete for a living. <laughs> I'm a concrete construction worker and part-time college student. That's why. I'm a moron. <laughs> right? Like, That's why. <laughs> <laughs> but like, because when you go to active duty range, like, because these guys do it every day. Right. Like, okay, yeah. so I, I've never been active duty, but... Like when I've been mobilized, we didn't have range safeties. They had guys that worked at the range. You just showed up, yep. right? Maybe a couple of your NCOs would be doing retraining, but they weren't running the range. They weren't up, you know, or if they were in the tower, they were just watching somebody else do the, do the work. Yeah. They weren't in the reserves. They're like, yep, here's your clipboard. Here's your range. Yep. Call, call it in when you go hot yep. or wet. You can't say hot anymore. Now it's wet. Yep, it's wet, wet status. Uh, yeah. Okay. There you yeah, go. Whatever that means. It used to be hot. 18 years ago, uh, at some point it was hot. Now it's yeah. wet. Wet and dry. Yeah. Putting range down. And the other thing about the military, now we're going on a total tangent. <laughs> I was running a 249 range. And somebody, in their infinite wisdom, when you turn ammo in, you can only turn it in when, when it's an unbroken crate. <laughs> so normally when you're making magazines, M4, M16, you're making tons of them, N9, you're making tons of magazines early in the day. And then you're like counting rounds down that are out there because you don't want to break open a crate because once you break it open, you got to expend all of it. Mm -hmm. Well, I was not running a range, but I came onto a range that was being ran by this, this fresh lieutenant and, and, a, and a staff sergeant. Something happened. I had to be the, they needed an E6. That guy had to go. I, I can't recall why. I think he, I actually, if I recall correctly, I came in for him because he had to go to the M16 range and shoot. I'm almost positive that's what it was. Yeah. So I came out of the range. In his infinite wisdom, 249 range, so everything, you know, there's no magazines. It's just all belts. He had the ammo shack open every single crate. No. No. <laughs> that day, I took two, four, two, two four nines on every firing position. And there was about three or four of us NCOs that just sat there. Cooking rounds, cooking rounds, cooking rounds, cooking rounds, cooking rounds. Jeez. Put one to the side, grab the next one, cooking rounds, cooking rounds, cooking rounds. And then someone else was changing the barrels on the first yeah. one. I probably cooked off 5,000 rounds that day, 6,000 rounds. Because they had signed for, you know, because you signed for your max allotment. Like every single person is going to shoot yeah. X number of rounds. Right? So if you have, if you have a, a, like the, the, the range there is probably 200 rounds for uh, 249 range. To, to qual per yeah. person, yeah, right? So that means you got got 100 soldiers in, in, in right? You're going to get, it, the, the army will hand you 20,000 rounds. They're like, here, here's 20,000 rounds. Yeah. And you go through like half of it actually shooting because not everybody shoots or shoot, people shoot and qualify. And, and, and they open up every crate. So we got 10,000 rounds that we had to cook. I, I, barrels were getting red. Yeah. I probably jacked a bunch of things up. Probably. And uh, I had I had soldiers because they're like, oh, just put all the belts together. I'm like, it's a terrible idea. Terrible idea. I mean, it's a great idea until it's not. It's a cool idea until you burn a barrel out. Yep. So so I had <laughs> yeah. cooking wrong. And, and, wrong. And, at, and at first I had another E6, E6, E6 I think it was E6, uh, come up to me. He's like, what are you doing? I'm like, this. He's like, is that a good idea? I was like, you got a better idea? You you, you come with. I remember it was getting dark. I'm just and like and the kids, because I was, and I turned into fam fire. So I, I had the kids. So basically, E3, E4, they never fired before. Got them up there. I'm like, all right, just get on it, pull the trigger. Like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to walk you through it by the steps. They're like, this is awesome. And then, like, 300 rounds later, they're like, this sucks. <laughs> <laughs> I'm exhausted. So I'm just sitting there, like, I'm tired. I'm just sitting there, like, I'm, I'm, my head, I remember, I'm sitting there, like, this is like 249. So I'm just sitting there, like, my head's down. Let me just tighter than this. He's going to, just like, oh, this is so stupid, right? <laughs> And you're watching all this brass fly. And you're like, I gotta clean all that shit up. Yep. And you can't clean up when someone's on the on on, on online. And there's there's no good way of like collecting because like oh. realistically, you think you could put just a put a five gallon bucket there instead of yeah. having someone hold it. But you can't, you can't because you have to separate the, the links, links from the, the brass and the brass. 
and it shoots out both in the same spot. So it's just a, yep. it's it's a pile. tragedy. And it's, and, it, and it's hot. Yep. Everything. It, yeah. So that's the other thing. When people now are like, hey, you want to go shooting? Like, I don't, I don't, I don't want to pay for, bo- for, for, for rounds. Yeah. The army gave me thousands of them. Yeah. I've shot a lot in my life. There you go. I have no idea where that story was going. I don't, I, I, I don't, I don't think we landed the ship. All right. So for people that are in the military, you, you'll appreciate it. For people non-military, you'll think it's awesome to fire thousands of rounds on a Saturday afternoon. It's not. Because you have to clean that up. Yeah. That's the, that is the reason. And this is not like when you go to a range, like the range you work at, right? Mm-hmm. Nice concrete floors. You got the big squeegee thingy. You push in the corner. You sweep it up. This is This is in the real world. Fort McCoy, where it only rains there. It either rains or it's 90 degrees. There's no in between. That's just a fact. Western Wisconsin is that way. So or it's, it's snowing. Or it's snowing. It could also snow. And it could be all the things in the same day. You can have 90 degrees and rain and snow all in the same day. I had that in April. I wouldn't doubt it. Yep. Like, you bring all your gear and you wear it all and whatever. But but the other thing is, when you're shooting all this, it's all in sand. So now you got to dig through. And you between your links and your brass, you have to make weight. Yep. You have to have enough weight. What is it like ninety percent dunnage? Yeah, something like that. So if you if you get twenty thousand rounds, you have to come up with eighteen thousand rounds worth of brass and and um, clips with the funny links. Why am I was saying clips? So mm-hmm. uh, the, and and this will land the ship. Now I remember how we started this. Yep. And this is why I have a desk job. <laughs> I haven't learned that yet. <laughs> yeah, you're going through ACL a, surgery I, I took, so you could do this bullshit. I took a voluntary, not promotion to, 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 to become a sniper and to do that job because it's always been something I wanted to do. When did you go to sniper school? As a five? Last year. No. Oh, you just, oh, you just became a sniper. Yep. Oh, I thought, you, I thought you deployed as a sniper. Nope. Not yet. Not yet. You're still deployable. Yeah. Fuck that. Well. Not in about a month. Yeah. <laughs> I'm deployable. I, my, physically, I'm deployable. Mentally, I'm deployable. But I have a non-deployable MOS. Like, right. we don't need career counselors overseas. No. Like, you already made you already made enough poor choices in your life yep. to get there. You don't need me to ask you to make another one. <laughs> I'm lying. It's not a poor choice. 18 years in the military. Like, talk about poor choices. Like, I, I'm habitually. <laughs> I'm a habitual offender. People are like, why should I trust you? I'm like, Cause I, keep, I keep re-enlisting. That's why. Because here I sit, this sweet ass job at a desk, my one laptop. <laughs> so there you go. You need career advice, military or civilian. All right, I'm the guy. If you want to learn how to do infantry things, I'm he's, the guy. He's the guy. We have 14 years in? It's almost six. It's almost 15. All right. I don't, All right. I don't know at this point. Somewhere around there. One more deployment and hit that E7 and yeah. there you go. Done. D U N done. <laughs> 